Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I am Hashim Ali Khan. So far we have completed the discrete probability distribution. Now in this video I am going to start the continuous probability distribution. Actually the probability distribution are classified into discrete and continuous. Discrete probability distribution will be applied whenever the random variable will take the whole number not in fractions. So there are many variables which cannot be in fraction. It may be in whole number. Example number of persons, number of defectives. These are the things which are in whole number not in fraction. So we have to apply the discrete probability distribution. The important discrete probability distribution are binomial and Poisson. Already we have done. We have completed the videos on binomial as well as Poisson. So many problems we have done. Now there are variables which may take a whole number value or a fractional value. So those values which may take any value whether it is whole number or fraction there we cannot apply discrete probability distribution. We have to apply continuous probability distribution. The most important continuous probability distribution in the whole field of the whole field of statistics is the normal distribution. Now in this video I am going to explain you about the theory of normal distribution. In the coming videos we will solve the problems on normal distribution. So before proceeding take the screenshot of the points which are written on the board then I will explain all the points in detail. Now, normal distribution. So a very important continuous probability distribution in the whole field, all the study of statistics is the normal distribution. So example, there are many variables like height, weight, etc. which may be in whole number or which may be in fraction. Example, the weight may be 45.2, 45.8, height may be for example 5.5 like that fractional values may also come. So the continuous variables are generally represented by a smooth curve instead of discrete values. So these continuous variables can be shown in the form of a smooth curve. The most important continuous probability distribution used in the entire field of statistics is the normal distribution. So comparatively this normal distribution is very very important in many areas where the values may take any form there we apply normal distribution its graph called the normal curve is a bell shaped curve when you draw the normal distribution it will be it will be a curve the curve will be in a bell shape like this this is the normal curve called normal curve is a bell shaped curve that extends indefinitely in both directions coming closer and closer to the horizontal axis with the, without ever touching it. See the two tails of the curve left tail and right tail will come closer and closer to the axis but it will never touch the axis. It will extend indefinitely on both the sides left side and right side without ever touching it. The normal distribution reflects the various values taken by many real life variables. So these the variables uh, in practical life so many areas are there where we come across the values may be whole number or fraction like height weight of the people or the marks of the students of a large class etc. So these are the areas where we have to apply for normal distribution. In all these cases, a large number of observations are found to be clustered around the mean value. So if we observe all these height, weight, etc. So much data is given. If, uh, if we closely watch the data, we find that so many values are clustered around the mean value. Around the mean value. So and the frequency drops sharply as we move away from the mean in either direction. So if we go away from the mean, the values will fall down. That means more values are clustered around the mean. For example, this perpendicular which you see is the mean value. 
so most of the values are around this perpendicular around this mean value so if you go away from mean the values will decrease now a distribution of continuous random variable with a single peaked bell shaped it's a distribution which is in a bell shaped with a single peak this is the peak only one peak we will have now the mean lies at the center of the distribution and the curve is symmetrical around a vertical line erected at the mean line. so mean lies at the center this is the center a perpendicular line is drawn at the center this is the mean right and it is symmetrical symmetrical means the area to the left of the mean is exactly equal to the area of the right of the mean that means from this perpendicular to the left it is exactly equal to the perpendicular to the right the left and right area will be exactly equal that's why it is called symmetrical the two tail extends indefinitely never touching the horizontal axis as we go on move away from the mean the tail of the curve will go on coming closer 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 to the x-axis but it will never touch the x-axis right now in examination you may get a theory question regarding what are the characteristics of normal curve or normal distribution so here some characteristic features i am going to explain you first one it is perfectly perfectly symmetrical for about the mean and is bell shaped the first characteristic feature is it is a bell shaped curve normal distribution is a bell shaped curve and it's symmetrical to the mean symmetrical to the mean means uh, when we draw the mean value the area to the left of the mean will be exactly equal to the area to the right of the mean this means that if we fold the curve along the vertical line at the center the two halves will coincide that means it is given uh, to show that it is uh, symmetrical if you fold the paper from the center of this line that means the two curve, two tails will coincide with each other if you fold from the center that is the first characteristic feature of normal distribution secondly mean is equal to median is equal to mode another characteristic feature of normal distribution is in this type of distribution normal distribution mean value median value mode all the three will be equal next one is it has only one mode that is uni model that means only one peak in this normal distribution you will find only one peak that's why it is called uni model only means one mode then the ordinate at the mean of the distribution divides the total area under the normal curve into two equal parts that means when you draw the center then what will happen the whole curve will be divided into two equal parts that means 50% of area will lie to left side and 50% area will lie on the right side further since the total area on the normal probability curve is 1 the area to the right of the ordinate as well as to the left of the ordinate is 0.5 we already know the probability value is 1 so the total area under normal curve is 1 so when we make half of this curve the 0.5 area will lie on left side and 0.5 area will lie on the right side this property this area property is very important to find out the probability it is asymptotic to the baseline on its either side asymptotic means a feature where the tail of the curve will come closer and closer as we move away from the mean but the tail will never touch the touch the axis this tail will never touch the axis it will become closer 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 as we go infinitely so as the distance of the curve from the mean increases the curve comes closer and closer to the axis but never touches it this is called asymptotic feature next one is one of the most fundamental property of the normal probability curve is the area property one of the main fundamental characteristic of the normal curve is the area property by using this area property only we can be able to find out the probabilities 
the area under the normal probability curve between the ordinates x is equal to mu minus sigma and x is equal to mu plus sigma is 60.6826 or in other words the range mu plus or minus sigma covers 68.26 percent of the total observations see here one of the property of this normal curve is if we add up mean with standard deviation and we subtract mean minus standard deviation then the total area between these two will be 68.26 percent example this is the normal this is mu minus sigma mu minus sigma and this is mu plus sigma the area from mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma is this area is 0 0.6826 0 0.6826 means 68.26 percentage of the total observations are covered between mu plus or minus standard deviation right secondly the area under the normal probability curve between the ordinates x is equal to mu minus 2 sigma and mu plus 2 sigma x is equal to mu plus 2 sigma is 95.44.9544 that is range mu plus or minus 2 sigma covers more than 95 percent of observation now see here x is equal to mu minus 2 sigma and x is equal to mu plus 2 sigma if we take up this the total area covered will be 0.9544 that means 95.44 more than 95 percent of the area will be between mu plus 2 sigma and mu minus 2 sigma this is another characteristic last one the area under the normal probability curve between the ordinate x is equal to mu minus 3 sigma and x is equal to mu plus 3 sigma will be 0.9973 or 99.73 observation or in other words 99.73 means almost equal to 1 that means the total area under the normal curve is mu plus 3 sigma and mu minus 3 sigma so mean plus 3 standard deviation and mean minus 3 standard deviation will cover the entire area of the normal curve this, this is the main property main characteristic feature of normal distribution now lastly what is the importance of this normal distribution normal distribution is very widely used in real practice in many areas to find out the probability so it is very useful in statistical quality control nowadays every manufacturing concern is focusing on quality control so in order to control the quality control limits are fixed so by using the property of normal distribution the control limits are fixed in order to control the quality by manufacturing organizations similarly it is very useful in problems of hypothesis testing actually hypothesis testing is sampling in sampling from the whole population a sample is drawn and by studying the sample we are giving the opinion about the population so in that case some hypothesis will be made hypothesis means tentative conclusion before testing before applying the test some conclusion tentative conclusion has to be made that is called hypothesis so sampling is also one of the very important statistical tool and in that sampling also this normal distribution will be used next one is frequency distributions of many physical characteristics such as heights and weights of the people dimensions of item for production processes etc often have the shape of normal curve so in many cases like height like weight etc we will find that the distribution is normally distributed so we can easily find out the probabilities by using this property of normal distribution so this shows the importance of this normal distribution that's this is the complete theory regarding normal distribution which is a continuous probability distribution inshallah in the next video we will start the problems on normal distribution